You've got how many tanks? 110, probably a couple more, but let's leave it at that. Yeah, it actually goes beyond here as well. There's even one in the house, because you're allowed one in one the house. One in the house, yeah. One in the house. Yeah, in the foyer. You can probably see this tank behind us here. There is a six foot aquarium hiding behind here. This one's been set up for now, um, probably three and a half years. So basically this will, it hasn't had anything done to it. It's overgrown, it is out the top. Yes, I've very gotta, overgrown. And to get into it, if I'm gonna do half, a uh, clean, I may as well do the whole thing. Plus I've got a, I want to try to um, breed all the fish that are in there. And the fish in here that you said that have only been bred with hormone <coughs> injections, can you just point out which ones those are? Yeah, so they're the Denison barbs or the torpedo barbs oh, there really the, with the stripes ones. on them, yep. Right. Is that why they're so expensive? It is, yeah. They So they inject them with hormones to breed them. In the farms they, would, they could only get them from the wild originally. I think the place of collection is, I think it's called the Ghats River in India and it's quite high up in the mountains as well so it's pretty clean and clear. The fish themselves were almost I think extinct from people taking them out of there and then different fisheries started to breed them quite regularly I think about three four five years ago with the hormone injections. And these guys will be going out of the tub for the breeding. All of them out in the tubs yep. yeah. Nice. Yeah, so they'll go on the big IBC with the, the just the hole cut in the top so they can't jump out. They're massive jumpers so hopefully I won't have to show you anything about that today. What I'm going to do is um, start from the top I guess. I'm going to take the plants out, put them into the black containers we got down here and then I want to keep all the moss. I'll probably reuse most of it in that um, in the new scape but it'll be most likely have Corydoras eggs and also rainbow eggs in there. All right let's get started. We'll yeah, stop procrastinating. <laughs> I know. If we don't start it's going to take a while I think. Is at the moment we're putting some water in here for the fish to go into. Uh, both oh. the Corydoras <coughs> are going to go into one tub and the plants into the other. Okay. And I've got no idea what I'm going to pull out of here, so it will be interesting. Whoa. It's pothos and... Um, Some type of philodendron yeah, or something. Yeah, something like that, yeah. Whew. 36 degrees today 36 Celsius. 36 degrees. So that's like 86 degrees Fahrenheit. I think. I'm not sure. Yeah, I don't do that. Feeling like that? <laughs> wow. I'll probably reuse some of them, um, but I usually just give them away. I don't really have the need for them. I can't really find any more space, really. So this is a spafilum or peace lily. I like on the tags that when you buy them, it says, you know, don't keep their feet wet, but they grow in water. Man, I'm going to be able to see in this tank again. It's cool. Yeah, how long did you say it's been? At least three years. I think this is our third, fourth Christmas here. I think we moved in just before Christmas. All right, look, it's already looking super bare and I've done absolutely nothing. <laughs> <laughs> so this, I'm gonna pull apart, this contraption. It's a, an old trickle tower. So I got given it, and I bought one of the tanks somewhere along the way. And it has levels and you put bio filters through and the guys at the biofish are actually again using them a lot. I think, but yeah, it just trickles through and it's like a biofilter, but it, one of the panels is broke and it's all coming apart, so it's time. Time to go. Yeah. Oh, well. Oh, <laughs> turn around. <laughs> Let's get rid of that, yeah. <laughs> Bit of cobweb nature. So this is the only time you'll see fake plants in my tank, is when I set it up, I bury that into the sand for the Corydoras, so the babies have somewhere to hide and then I cover it with moss. So it like the survival rate in a tank situation is way better. Now I've got so much moss, because I didn't have much moss or much plants, you know. <laughs> so you do what you do when you don't have necessarily the time or money to do it and just a bit of ingenuity then you can make up for the loss. And that for me was just to cover a little bit with moss and they just, they were just drawn to it. And obviously I got many, many out of the as a result, the Corydoras have got poison in their spines. So they jab you and they hurt. But you can see here how they hide. So when you go to grab the rocks, see them all down here? So you just grab a rock and then you grab one of them and those yellow spines are where the poison is. Huh. And they inject it into you. Do the albino? All of them have it, but different degrees as far as levels of poison and pain associated with same. The Adolfois were bad. Like I've been stung by a bull route before, a stonefish in oh. my tank. So that was unpleasant. But the Adolfoy, it wasn't that as bad as that, but it wasn't far off it. It, it like it really hurt. 
It's too dark at the back to grab the rest of the rocks out. I'm, I've talked myself out of grabbing them, so I'll grab these ones at the front there, and yeah. I might even drain some down. See if I can fit this massive bit of timber in as well. So I've got an idea of potentially having it sort of sweeping up out of the tank like that, and somehow putting some, um, some greenery on that. So I don't know if it's gonna fit in there. I was gonna do a little bit of the prep work beforehand, but I thought it defeats the purpose of actually you know, filming the breakdown of the tank. So, the rapid extraction pipe. <laughs> <laughs> that is going to be very rapid. That is a thick pipe. It's warm today. Got to check and make sure there's no fish going down the end if there's... Oh yeah. We definitely don't want that. We've got a bit of... A bit of moss. Yeah. Here, I saved you some moss if you want it. <laughs> Thank you. You don't have enough plants. <laughs> you might have babies on it anyway. Who knows? Yeah, maybe this moss has the baby torpedo barbs. So, as you can see, we're nice and drained. We're ready to get these fish out and hopefully not get stung by any of the chlorus. And hopefully no torpedo barbs jump out. Let me hand you this. Uh, make sure let's put it down there. This is the boy. See the difference in color? Yeah, wow. They're gorgeous. Yeah. And I say six, didn't I? You paying I attention? I was not listening. <laughs> was I paying attention? <laughs> one, two, say still. One, two, three, four, five, six, yeah. I counted eight, I'm sure I counted eight. Ooh, these guys are cute. Cute but dangerous. Makes eight. Beautiful. All right, let's go and put them in. Oh, well done. Well done. It doesn't always happen that easily. All right, we're gonna give you guys a look at the tubs that are out here where those fish are gonna go, the torpedo Correct. barbs. And the rainbows. And the rainbows. I just screwed a top on it to stop the frogs and the oh, yeah. dragonfly larvae from oh, getting in there. Oh, to play. <laughs> Probably the blue uh, lacustrous rainbows in that one. Mm -hmm. And then we'll put the torpedo barbs in the IBC over there. In that one. And then the other half one we'll put uh, the reds. Reds or blues, I think. Reds down there and the blues up here. There's less of the blues, so I can keep an eye on. Oh, what is that? No. Yeah. Get them into the gosh, look at that. Oh my oh my goodness, here I've got a I'll be helping you, but I've got a huge <laughs> tripod right. in my hands I can't let go of. Alright, we'll get them straight in. And the other ones are worse. Oh well there you go, there's a pro tip you can learn from this. If you're gonna be moving rainbow fish in a bucket, make sure you put a lid on it. Preferably take a lid, yeah. on. Hopefully they'll stay put. Almost. There's still one in the corner here. Yep, you've got him up against glass almost. Mm -hmm. I'm hopeless at catching fish, but the one thing that I have found is definitely if you drain the tank, it helps quite a bit. For sure. There's one stir boy in there as well. Yeah. So you got to remember the number we put in there. So there's one at the one. moment. One. <laughs> one stir by. Okay. All right, so we end up working how many we got. So you know exactly how many fish you've got of every type. <laughs> no, no, close, but um, yeah, if they're bred in here or they died in here, no. I was gonna say, I feel like a bad fish keeper, <laughs> not keeping up with my numbers. Hmm. All right, you got him if you go up. Yep, yep. Three in there. So as a general rule, I like to put a towel over the top to stop them jumping out. <laughs> All right. Anything I can't get. 
baby is behind me currently moving out the torpedo barbs. So these are the ones that have not been bred naturally in an aquarium before. So they always get injected with hormones because they need a very natural environment to breed. But AB's got an excellent idea to put them out in a IBC tub. So that's like that big plastic tub that you saw out there, which a thousand litres of water that one. Very private for the fish as well so it's pretty enclosed so I think a lot of people have luck breeding fish in IBC tubs because you just kind of set and forget. Natural light, natural conditions, natural rain. Yeah so that way then the fish aren't being bothered by people and disturbed all of the time it's more of like a wild environment or a more natural environment for them so fingers crossed there's going to be some luck breeding those guys in there. <laughs> See Come what I'm on. carrying? <laughs> slow poke. That's why I'm so slow. Alright, here they go. So I've made sure there's no um, snails, no shrimp, um, nothing in there that can eat in their eggs because they're egg scatterers. Mm -hmm. So. Alright, so now for these guys, all that's left to do is just let them sit and feed them every now and then. And every night. <clears throat> they'll get fresh rainwater and stuff in there, so. Live black worms, mosquito larvae. So we're sort of halfway there. Yeah, we're getting there. One. So we are now up to 121. 122. 122 of these quarries. They just keep coming. And so this is because these guys have just kept breeding. In yeah, there. yep. I think I started with about 12. And I've sold at least, well, at least 100. So yeah, I don't have any trouble breeding these guys. So I'm going to drain the rest of that water out because the quarries are a little bit too tricky to catch. It's at least 141. At least 141 quarries. At least, yeah. You got the super mini net now. Yeah, for the tiny ones. We've got two little babies in there. Put this in there. Oh, beautiful what? little fish. There's some little Very babies nice. that's growing up. Very beautiful. These little orange spikes. Hey guys, I can see all the little yellow fins. 144. 144? And that's all of them? It's as far as I can see. You usually miss one or two. But I'm not draining the water out completely and they're going back in, so. Come on in. Into air yeah, you'll see. Yeah, so. I think last time it wouldn't have had the Texas Holy Rock in it. Yeah, I don't think it did. So, um, I put that in, which is great. It actually does the. Um, hardness, the carbonate hardness and all that sort of stuff for me. So it's just running on a Eheim filter. They're a Lake Malawi cichlid, a, um, an Embuna. And the boys are blue, girls are yellow. And if you can get down far enough to see with that, it drains straight outside, there's a hole through the wall. And then oh, I've got a tap on the other side with that hose coming in. And so I go outside, I turn that tap on, it drains out there and I turn the tap on in outside and it fills up at the same time. See um, the petrocola catfish oh, in, yeah. in the bubbles there. There is petrocola. There's five or six in there. Tony got me those guys. So I've got to duck off now. Maybe he's going to do some vlogging of the scaping that he does I'll while go. I'm at my niece's birthday party. I will be back in about an hour and a half or maybe an hour I'd say. I'm going to leave him with this good camera and the little DJI vlogging mm -hmm. one. We should get some good footage hopefully. Maybe. No pressure. No, no pressure, pressure at all. Yeah. See how that goes. Say goodbye to the fish room for now and get down this mega driveway. So Katie's away. She's given me some pretty strict instructions about what to do. I don't have a YouTube channel, so I figured I'll just uh, play it by ear and fly by the seat of my pants. What do you reckon, Zig? Let's go and have a look at these fish and see um, how they're settling in first. So this is my Avery Pond. I had a little bowl out here that I decided to blend in a bit. It's got orange shrimp in here, a bonsai, these desert roses. Might be able to see some shrimp in there. So my blue rainbows are in there. That's just completely full of duckweed and tadpoles. You might be able to see them coming up through the sun there. And there my, uh, oh, there's the big black one. Then my kahaku sword tails, but I've got orange, white, orange with black tails. Again, I don't know if you can pick it up there, but 
right now it is 12 38 so ab will be hard at work in the fish room at the moment i'm, gonna, I'm calling them wagtail kahaku so i'm breeding those guys hello <laughs> happy birthday oh i found elf on the shelf Wait, hey, so he did be your eyes, yeah. now he's there, because he did be a wet. These are the logs that I'm now going to try to fit in. I'm going to use that in the far left corner. I've got to put a bracket up for that. And I'm thinking this should come out of the water. Something like that, maybe. I thought in that top section there. And then I can plant some plants around it and thicken it up. And then I've got to somehow get a bracket in in here, which I'll stick into the corner of the wall. At least I'm getting something done. I love this beautiful Christmas tree. Oh, now look. What is that? A puppet. Oh my goodness. Now we'll actually have more fish it. Oh my God, what is that? <laughs> is that a dog? Yeah. Why does it feel hot? Because it's been in the car. <laughs> What I've done is just mount this bracket into the corner of the wall there to give me enough surface area to be able to put the other spillway on. I have to get it so it's spilling in but not coming too far. I guess it does fit, but then you just can't get around that side. Hi, Jaden. I wonder if this could fit. Hi, Jaden. He's nice to me. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Yes. <laughs> Pretty um significant, you would say, wouldn't you? Well, it depends. I'm gonna have the other stuff up quite high, where that pothos is growing up the wall there. It's attached itself to the wall. Still a tad imposing, but I'll see if I can soften it. Okay. The trick is trying to blend it all together and hide the things like the pots and the square edges of that cut with stuff like this, or one, preferably one big log, and then fill in the gaps with any of the plants that I've got there, some val in front of it, or some of the, uh, particularly the moss. There'll be a heap of Java moss. I'm still not sure about that. Okay, what I did was lay it down. Same piece of timber, the plants, in the uh, light holder. This is still quite sturdy. You can see I've just basically jammed it in over there. There still seems to be enough room, I think, as far as a swim room goes. Call AB. Hello. Hey, boss. Uh, hey, on my way back now. So Wait. I'll be there at quarter past two, it says. Yeah, don't stress, no dramas. I'm just um, plodding away. Awesome. Did you want a coffee? Uh, no, I'll be all good. Thank you. You're all good? All right, I'll see you soon. Thanks. See you. Bye-bye. Bye. I just heard from the boss. She's on her way back now. She doesn't sound happy that I haven't finished the hardscape, so I'm going to have to get cracking. And I think the trick with anything when you're trying to blend something fake with something natural is go for curves, because anything fake is almost always going to have a straight line and then put the rocks in front of it. And even if you've got gaps, um, that's okay because that naturally happens and you can stick all of the Java moss and the other stuff I've got in there. If I can get out of the door. Hello. Is that, oh, I thought that was a picture. I thought that's that was, right. oh my gosh. That looks awesome. Yeah. Wow. That's so flat, like up against the back. Yeah. That I thought that that was part of the, like a fake background. Well, there you go. That's, um. I'm pleased that it actually looks good then. Oh, and you're using um, the background, the 3D background. So I wasn't going to, like, but then when I realised it was going to be have to be a cave type scenario because it's about six inches further than I thought it was going to be. So um, I then went down and got all the stuff from down the, I got pallets of hardscape down there and then put it in and then I changed the, the scape around a bit. But I've tried to hide the background as much as I can have this little area like a bit of a cave i've got lots more to do to make it look more natural but that's pretty much it and i'll have rocks sort of through to here and then the rest will be sand and i've got a cave under here for them for them um all the, the quarries to hide and they'll hide under there oh and the waterfall <laughs> i didn't mm. even see it off it goes down there 
I so, can't wait to see that when it gets turned on. Yeah, I've it's got gonna the, be very the, cool. The pump's gonna go out the back there. I've just gotta maneuver it. How exciting. It's getting wow, done. You got a lot done. Thank you. Because we've got this rack here, it's that wedge shape. Mm. So I'm trying to draw your eye to the furthest point. Mm -hmm. So and to do that, I've got that timber going that way. Um, and I've also got the light on an angle going that uh -huh. way. So in theory, it should look like a six foot tank, whereas before it was just, you know, in the middle of- It's very clustered. Yeah, you had to get really close and look at it really essentially perpendicular. I don't know how I went operating the two cameras, but I'm sure you'll find out in editing. Yeah, I can't wait to see. It was really nice too, by the way. We've got a little bit of a mess here, but <laughs> we've made good progress. We have. And by we, I mean you have. I'm just filling it with clean water now. Pumps in the corner for the waterfall, so I haven't scaped the top of it just because if I do that and the pump doesn't work, then I've got to pull it all out. I managed to get another tall piece of timber in, which is what I wanted to ultimately have that balance. And I think it's done that. So I got that in and there's a cave underneath that log there now and some new some new sand and some rocks, which we'll see once I drain it all out. It's been a long day, just for one tank. It has been. And the quarries are going in there? Yeah, I think I'll yeah. put them back in tonight. I don't really need to breed them. I was gonna keep them in there and breed them, but I think I've got probably a dozen babies out now. These quarries, we calculated as well, even if they were being sold at $25 each, which is, you know, for much smaller ones, there's 145 in here. It's well over $3,000 worth of quarries yeah, that are just sitting in this. That's crazy, huh? Did you have any idea that there was going to be that many in the tank? Oh, I thought about 100. Okay, about 100. So, so you got to... I spend lots of time looking more. and counting sometimes. So now it's just a matter of waiting for this to fill up and then... You'll be able to see his beautiful work and the little horde of quarries can have a nice new home. All right, so let's let this finish filling up and then we'll give you a good look when it's all nice and clear. Quick little water break. I told you I've got an Instagram, didn't I? <laughs> no, I don't think so. <laughs> Guys, come to the top there, surface feeders. And you watch them go. Yeah, awesome little fish. For the core reason, just planted out some swords either side. Tried to disguise the, the join between this stump and that stump uh, with as much moss as I can. Plus, of course, the core and everything will lay their eggs in that. And then there's an air stone behind that in the middle just to keep the flow going. And then I've really just tried to put the moss into all of the corners and all the cracks and crevices and anywhere that would normally sort of you know, something could get caught and then potentially grow. And um, underneath that, that, if they, this little lip on your right there, see that, how that mm -hmm. plastic, uh, sorry, the, the fake background comes down. It's actually like a little veranda, so uh, they can get under there as well. So I've left it open a fair bit. There's way more swim room for the rainbows and the barbs when they come back. Although the barbs, I'm, I'm thinking of being putting in the eight footer, <laughs> but the rainbows, I think we'll enjoy that tank better. It should be a high flow. So the next step for us is to um, to just fill it up, which I shall turn on now. All right, we will be back. It's gonna be cool comparing the before and the after. Yeah. It'll be nice to get them actually outside and colored up and they'll look great for a few months and then bring them back in. We'll just clean up. Hey, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Easy, you can sweep it out, hose it. And our little Corey's in here, patiently waiting. They're gonna be going into their new home very soon. Yeah, I think they'll be happy in there for a while. Oh, I think they're gonna love it. Film me completely screwing all this up. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't had this flavor before actually, so. I've had it, I've had it from a shop before, but I haven't bought it from the shops like this where you make it like this, so hopefully it's good. Well, unfortunately, we filmed Amy's first time trying tarot tea, but it didn't film properly. So the gist of it was that it tastes like skim milk. Almond milk. Almond milk with a little bit of syrup in it. I've had better before. It's not as good as what you get from the stores, but it's refreshing because it's nice and cool at least. I've got the waterfall. I need to get that on film. Hang on. All right. I love a good waterfall. Oh, here it goes. There yeah, because you're going to try and shine the light through the cave, hey? Yay! There we go. Yeah, that looks good. I need to bring that. Waterfall. There's rocks out there a bit more though. It's gonna aerate it really nicely. Mm. 
Yeah, I think they like it. And then the next is to uh, turn on the uh, the canister filter. Pipes, inlet, outlet. I'll reconnect this. Now we just need to add all the cores in. Yeah. Spitting out a bit of gunk, well, that's okay. All right, one final drain and refill. Are you adding plants now? Yeah, just the, the ones I got out of here, I'm just gonna fit into the top of it. When are you gonna build your pond? Oh yeah, that's, um, I'd love to do it. Um, this year, but probably within six months maybe, you know? <laughs> Just gonna get the quarries out. Gonna look good in the black background. Really cool. So you don't see that very often. Almost 150 quarries. Yeah. And we're gonna get them out of there, put them in here. Just because there's all muck and stuff on the bottom. Minus all those mis uh, the um, Malaysian trumpet snails, hopefully. Oh yeah, we don't. But I'll get a few bucketfuls, I reckon. Definitely wouldn't want to put my hands in there with them. No. All right, you're good to go. You got the duckweed off. All right. Oh, that's cool. We got them all up there. A couple of stragglers I got left. Merry Christmas, there's some of my Aww. eggs and some of my honey for you Thank as well you. to take home. Thank oh, you for the lovely. chocolates that you bought me. I love this. AB's honey. Yeah. It's Very good honey nice. too. I'm back at AB's fish room. So one week later. One week later, yes. And wow, I can't believe it's been a week already. That's mm. crazy. It is. And so as I always do, I left something here, even though I triple checked to make sure I didn't leave anything. I left stuff. I left my charger for my camera and my battery and everything. So I had to come back anyway. Yep. Um, but it actually worked out really well because now we can give you guys a proper look at it now that it's nice and clear. <laughs> yeah. So it's cleared up heaps now. And you've also added a little bit of stuff to the top. By yeah. The so um, during the week, I just cleaned the canister filter and just rescape the top so that the plants were in the water and then the logs at the top as well which you'll see I'm sure you'll do a bit of b-roll now but um, yeah it's cleaned up well uh, there was 145 adult quarries and I got 20 what's it say on there 23 um, stir by uh, little babies out of as well so, yeah you um, found some extra ones yeah so, so uh, 168 quarries. or something it was so in, in the one tank so that was pretty cool but anyway I'm really happy with the the way it turned out. I have to be super quick as well because it's actually my birthday today. Oh, happy birthday. I didn't yeah. know that. Oh, didn't you? No. Didn't. <laughs> oh, really? I, I don't. How would I know oh, that? <laughs> I thought I told you. That's why I'm going out to dinner. No, so, there you go. Yeah, so I'm on the Gold well, Coast now. Well, happy birthday. Now. Thank you. So I'm on the Gold Coast to see my family. We're going out to dinner at the surf club, so that's why I'm kind of dressed up as well because, yeah, it's my birthday. Beautiful. So. Yeah, I, right. I think I always end up doing filming fish yeah. stuff on my birthday. I've actually been editing a video all day, but that's what I like doing, so. I'll move okay. this. <laughs> Oh, that's a nice shot. Beautiful. All right, well, I would love to stay for longer, but I have to go so I can make it on time for my dinner. Especially given you're the guest of honor. <laughs> giving what? Especially given oh, that you're the guest oh, of yeah, honor. Yeah, that's true, it is my birthday. <laughs> let me know if you like the style of video. Let me know what you want to see more of in the future too, because ultimately I just want to be posting things that you want to see as well as an audience. So if you like something, make sure you give it a like. Let me know what you think in the comments. And if you want to show your support, you can subscribe as well. And then hit that little bell notification so you get notified each time I upload new videos. And you can also check out AB's Instagram. Oh, I forgot about that. AB's Fish Room as well. Oh, I, I could, I could feel that, yeah. him dying to say that. Thank you for mentioning that. <laughs> so awesome. check that out as well. And maybe one day he'll have his YouTube channel. Maybe. Maybe. We'll see. Thank you. All right. Bye, bye. guys.